Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell, brought to you by the Physics Department at the Colorado School of Mines. I'm Eric. And I'm Nicole. So far we've talked about different types of structures, but today we want to look at specific examples that are important in solid state physics. We'll start by looking at different cubic systems, transition into diamond, and finish with a discussion on close pack structures. Nicole, why don't you start us off with some cubic structures? Sure. First we have alpha polonium, which is simple cubic. Then we have alpha iron in the body-centered cubic structure, and finally copper in the face-centered cubic structure. These structures are similar in the sense that they're all cubic and share the same basis, one atom at zero, zero, zero. But they differ in what kind of centering they have. It's also worth talking more about the FCC structure, since it's similar to the diamond structure, which is arguably one of the most important structures in solid state. Why diamond in particular? So we're interested in the diamond structure because silicon forms the basis of virtually all of microelectronics in the last 60 years, also forms in the diamond structure. So when we look at the diamond structure in Vesta, it's not inherently obvious that there's a connection between the diamond structure and FCC structures. You're right, it's not. Let me try making slices for each, with FCC on the left and diamond on the right. Oh, the, the two are almost the same. Except the diamond structure has these extra two slices at A3 equals a fourth and three quarters in reduced units. Now if I look back at the diamond structure in VESA, I can see every atom has a coordination number of four, consistent with sp3 hybridization. Now the final structures we want to introduce are called the close packed structures. In materials that show no preferred direction of bonding, coulombic attraction and repulsion forces compress and expand the atoms. Eventually, the nuclei settle into an equilibrium distance from one another. So we call it closed packed because literally the atoms try to cram themselves as tightly as they can to each other. Yeah. In two dimensions, this closed packed structure manifests as a hexagonal packing of hard spheres. What about in three dimensions? So, turns out extending this concept into three dimensions is mathematically a little tricky. But the consensus in the field is that there are two different common structure that are as close packed as you can get in 3D. They both take two-dimensional sheets of hexagonally packed spheres and lay them on top of each other. The only difference being how they're stacked? Exactly. This is best seen in an example. In this video, I've taken an FCC structure and expanded the cell boundaries. Now I want to get rid of the excess atoms until I'm left with those along the body diagonal. If we look down at these atoms as so, can you see the hexagonal pattern? Yeah. And not only that, but the hexagons look like they're shifted. And that's the stacking I was talking about. There's a shift sideways between the layers, so we call that ABC stacking. The other stacking is simply AB stacking. So instead of two shifts, you'd have a shift in one direction, and then it would shift back into its original position? Yeah, and that type of stacking is seen in magnesium, which has the hexagonal close back structure. Well, Eric, it looks like it's a good time to do a recap of today's video. Sounds good. Today we went over different types of centering in cubic systems, looked at the similarities between the FCC and the diamond structure, and compared both types of close pack structures. Today's questions to ponder are designed to give you some practice comparing different types of structures. For instance, we compared the diamond and FCC structures. It'd be a good idea to look at how diamond is connected to the zinc blend and fluoride structures. I'd suggest you use slices to help you in your comparison. Speaking of slices, in a previous video where we looked at slices, we introduced the perovskite structure. How is this structure connected to the rhenium trioxide structure? We've talked before about cesium chloride and how it forms a body-centered cubic structure. Sodium chloride, on the other hand, forms into the rock salt structure. So why does this happen? And finally, to get you a bit more practice with slices, take a look at cesium chloride. Can you describe this material as two interpenetrating lattices? If so, which ones? I'd suggest tiling your slices in the A1, A2 plane. Next time, we'll be looking at how to label planes in crystal structures. Thanks for watching Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. See you next time.